Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how you can classify accurately texts and documents with generative AI. And all what I will show you in this video comes with sample code that you can download from GitHub. You'll find the links in the description of this video. First, let's talk about a few use cases of text and document classification to understand what we're trying to achieve. First example, you have product descriptions and you want to fit them into categories. Or maybe you have a document processing workflow and you want to classify these documents to send them to the right process. Or maybe another example, you have invoices and uh, you want to know what is the nature of the expense. There are many other use cases, but I think you get it. The main idea is that you have categories and you want to classify text or documents into these categories. So, how can you achieve that with generative AI? Maybe you're going to tell me that it's simple. You just have to ask a large language model like GPT or Claude. Indeed, you could write a prompt telling, here is the text I want to classify and here are the descriptions of the categories. And please tell me which category this text belongs to. In most of the cases, this naive approach would work, but there are two caveats. First, what if you have a large number of classes, like thousands of classes? Your prompt would be too long because you have to describe every category. And the second challenge is, how do you make sure that your classification is accurate? As you know, LLMs can hallucinate, and in some use cases, you need high accuracy. Let's see how we can solve that. We're going to use a three steps workflow. First step, semantic search. This will perform a search among all the categories to narrow the number of candidates to a small number, which could be something between, let's say, 5 to 20. In the second step, we re-rank the candidates to find the best one. And finally, in the third step, we use attribute validation to check that the element that we want to classify matches the attributes of the selected categories. This step helps us make sure that the classification is correct. Maybe it's a little bit confusing, so let's stop with the theory and I think it will become clear with the demo. The demo that I'm showing you now comes from the GitHub repository. In the repo, you will find Python code that implements the workflow and also this UI that enables you to play and experiment quickly. We're going to use a dummy medical supplies classification dataset. In this dataset, we have several classes like diagnostic equipment, surgical instruments, medical consumables, and for each class, we have an example item. So let's use the example of a digital thermometer. It should be classified as a diagnostic equipment, but as we can see, it has been classified as patient monitoring which is not correct. Why did it happen? Because we only used the first step of the workflow, which is the semantic search. Diagnostic equipment, which is the correct class, comes second in the semantic search. To solve that, let's activate re-ranking, which is the second step of our workflow. And we can see that after re-ranking, diagnostic equipment comes first, which is correct. And if we want to make sure that we have found the correct class, we can activate attribute validation. This is the third step of our workflow. This step will check that our digital thermometer matches the conditions for being in the diagnostic equipment class. For instance, it must be a medical device or instrument designed for patient examination. And we can see that this is the case here. In the conditions, we can have nested and and or groups. For instance, in this or group, we need only one of the conditions to be met. And if we remove the re-ranking, we can see that our attribute validation tells us that our classification is not correct. For instance, to be in the patient monitoring class, the object must be designed for continuous or real-time patient observation, which is not the case for our digital thermometer. Now, what if you want to create your own dataset to tackle your specific use case? 
you can define your classes in a JSON file. But here, for the example, we will use the domain wizard from the demo UI, which will create a new dataset for us. Let's say we want to generate a car parts dataset. For the example, we're going to keep it small with only three classes, but of course, in real life, you could use a much larger number of classes. You can see that the LLM generated three classes for us. Now we can start classifying. The first time we classify, the system will automatically generate the embeddings. And we can also use re-ranking, but we cannot use attribute validation yet because we have to define the attributes for each class first. Fortunately, we can use an LLM to generate attributes for us. So let's go to the attributes section, select our car parts dataset, and ask for attribute generation. You will have to wait a little bit, but then you will get the first version of your attributes that you can edit. When you're done, you can go back to classify and you can now use attribute validation. And this will help you make sure that your classification is correct. In the GitHub repository, you will find instructions to run the demo UI. It's here. You just have to configure your AWS credentials and then you can launch the demo with a single command. It's very simple. You will also find the Python code which implements the workflow. It comes with several examples. Let's look at the basic usage. You define your classes in a JSON file. You give a path for the embeddings. They will be automatically generated if they don't already exist and you call the predict method. Feel free to explore the examples in the Getting Started directory. That's all for today. I hope that you will have a lot of fun classifying texts and documents. Feel free to follow our channel and let me know what you think about the demo in the comments.